When I'm looking for a crew to do a project, I definitely look for people who know more than I do. Something that's amazing about having a crew is that there's so many experts who are so experienced and so skilled at their jobs and you can rely on them and learn from them. And I think sometimes people make the mistake of trying to do every job themselves rather than relying on the brilliance of the people who have been sort of honing that craft for a long time. When I first started making girls, it was my first time working with a really expanded crew. I'd only worked with small, small indie crews. And so I started when I would interview, say, a first AD, I'd ask them, what does a first AD do? What's a first AD? What will our interactions on set be like? Because I needed that education. And the people who were willing to give me generous answers were the people I was really excited to work with. To be a successful director, I don't think there's any one single quality that you need. I do think it's important to recognize that directors come in all shapes and sizes. I think one of the reasons that so few women have chosen to be directors is because they think, oh, I'm not tough enough, or oh, I'm not good enough at bossing people around, when the fact is, it takes all kinds. I do think that compassion makes for a good director because you need to be able to connect to the actors, understand what they're feeling, understand that they're in a vulnerable position, connect to your crew and what their stresses are, see how you can help them sort of bolster themselves. You need to sort of be a compassionate leader, but also I think the challenge of directing is figuring out how to tap into that compassion and help the people around you while also staying true to your own vision and what you want out of the project creatively. I think that a really great performance is a collaboration between the director and the actor in that it involves the vision that the director and writer first brought to the project mixed with the new take that the actors had on it. And your ideal actor for a role is someone who's going to have a really unique and specific take on what you've already written and expand upon and add to it. So I think by listening to the needs and opinions of your actors, you empower them to do the best job they possibly can and you learn a lot about what you're making. I think directing is a lot about compromising, but it's also a lot about letting your original vision go and letting something even better happen. Because you can shot list the night before and go, I know just what I want, this is two shots, but, and I know the location and I know the actor, but you get there and it becomes clear that it just needs to be covered a certain way for maximum creativity and efficiency, and that that is going to be the best, um, that, the, that the best way of handling the scene is not something you'd originally anticipated. So you need to be open and fluid about those changes and not be too uh, stuck in the mud about the shot list that you previously made. I think um, my strength as a director is um, being able, I hope, to guide my actors while still giving them freedom, giving them security, but also freedom. Sort of what you'd want from a parent and what I want from when I'm acting and I'm being directed by someone else, that's what I want, which is support, but also for the person to believe in my ability to take that scene and run with it. Um, I think something that I could work on as a director sometimes is that it's nice to be brief with your words in the middle of a scene. Sometimes I'll go in while someone's deep in their performance space and just tell them everything I'm thinking and give them too much backstory. And sometimes people just need one or two words so they can stay in the moment and correct slightly. And so I'm working on kind of not getting too verbose in the middle of scenes and letting people really, um, letting people really stay in the moment. I think when you're young and when you're in a position of power, which on a set being a director is, sometimes it's hard for people and sometimes they have to kind of give you a hard time and question you and try to, they try to really pick you apart to see if you're really for real. And I've definitely had actors, not too many, I've been really lucky on girls, but I've definitely had actors who have sort of challenged my authority and, and tried to make me sort of prove to them that I knew what I was doing. And I don't love that because it's sort of like, none of us exactly know what we're doing. We're here to be creative and play around. So to try to test each other, I wouldn't do that to an actor. And I hope an actor wouldn't do that to me. But I've definitely had moments where I felt like I was a little bit being punished for what they perceived as my lack of experience. Although I write, direct, and act, I would say that I'm the most comfortable when I'm writing, you know, in my private space, connecting with my work, that's the moment when I feel most myself. And acting and directing are a stretch. They send me out into the social world. They challenge me, and I feel very grateful for that. For aspiring directors looking to break through and make their mark, I would say tell a story that feels true to you. Don't try to make something that you think other people want to see. Make the thing that you want to see, and you're not the weirdest person in the world, so other people will want to see it too.